Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word from the Lord. James over here with you. We're glad you are with us tonight to continue studying from God's Word. We want to always give you our content information. If you're there in the area, we uh, you can reach me at Word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653. You say you can reach me. We meet at 250 the Boulevard in uh, Eden. And if you're in the area, we'd love to see you Sundays uh, 9 and 10 a.m. and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Of course, if you're in the Martinsville area, 823 Starting Avenue or Danville, 120 American Legion, American, uh, 120 American Legion Boulevard in Danville, those, in, those are places where you can assemble with the Lord's people and always uh, study God's Word and, and know that if you have a question, you can ask that question and, and get a Bible answer for that. So we want you to realize that we're individuals that like to study God's Word and we're wanting to... Uh, uh, come to a greater understanding with you, help you in any way we can. In Acts chapter 8, and about verse 36, you know, the, uh, uh, the eunuch, or excuse me, 8, 30, the eunuch said, how can I understand except someone guide me? And so, you know, friends, sometimes we need someone to give us an instruction, some, some help, help us understand why the Bible uh, is not contradicting itself when it says one thing as opposed to something we've heard from somewhere else. And so if you, what you're hearing uh, where you are is confusing, maybe you need someone to help you under, uh, better understand what the Bible is having to say. And so we want to do that very thing. That's why we're glad to study with you, come to your place or meet you somewhere to study God's Word. Uh, uh, anything we can do for you, all of our literature information is free. It's just a matter of we're trying to help you get to heaven. And so we want, to, uh, uh, want you to know that we will do anything we can uh, that's in, within our power to help you to understand God's word better so we can uh, uh, walk together, be together, Amos 3 and verse 3, and we want to do that very thing. Friends, tonight I want to talk a little bit about time because it seems to me that one thing that we fail to uh, appreciate is time. You know, the number of sayings about time, time is a teacher, uh, time is a healer. If you've got a broken heart, give it time, it'll heal. Uh, Albert Einstein said time is an illusion. We think we have time, but in reality, we don't know how much time we're going to have. James, in uh, James, the fourth chapter, says that our life is but a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanished away. We don't know how long we're going to have. James 4 and verse 14, Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. So you don't know how much time we actually have left. We may not have time to finish this program. Some of you may not know if we finished the program because I understand the, the cable's going on out in Chat Moss or, or even in Martinsville. So you may not know what's going on. But I know this, friends. The Bible says that's a point of man wants to die and after that the judgment. So when your time is up on this life, you're not getting it back. But one thing about time is... Time changes everything It's what uh, has been said. Time changes everything. I had a teacher in high school, and uh, I know he was, he was directing this toward religion because we were talking about uh, the Bible or, or religious matters, and he said time changes everything, whether it be science or religion, time changes everything. And his point was people learn information, and he said that's, that's, that's uh, changing things. Well, you may learn from more information about science, and that changes the science book. And you may learn that, well, a theory of science was not true, and so that changes science in that regard. But it's not going to change the truth of God's Word. Jesus said in John 70, 17, Sanctify them with truth, thy word is truth. And that's not going to change. That is not going to change at all. As a matter of fact, listen to what, what Peter said in 1 Peter 1, 23. 1 Peter 1, verse 23, he says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Friends, God's word is not going to change. But even though time changes everything, it's not going to change the truth of God's word, but it will change how people respond to the word. Now that's going to change, 
And you can look back through time and see how people have changed when it comes to how they view the Bible. Just take for our society, for example. It used to be that the Bible was the, was the reader. You know, it was the thing that, that people could read or, or learn to read by. Uh, now, there's a uh, uh, caller from Collinsville. I don't know if she's going to tell us that we're back on the air or not, which if we are, I'm glad. But if not, there's nothing I can do about it. So, uh, nonetheless, but here's the thing. People look at the Bible differently. It used to be it was revered, it was respected. It was, you know, you didn't uh, uh, do anything to malign the Bible. I remember people telling uh, about not even setting anything on the Bible. If you laid your Bible on the table, you know, you didn't put anything on top of it. You didn't put a piece of paper on top of it or anything. You, you respected the Bible. But now the Bible is, is no more than a, a, a doorstop for some people. It's just something that collects dust. It's not, not revered or respected at all. So why is it that things have changed? Here's why. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and let's look at verse, uh, let's just begin in verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. What has caused the change? It's not the word. It's not the Bible. It's not God's word that's changed. It's the way people look at it, how they treat it, how they act toward it. They have changed because they want something a little more appealing, something that's a little more smooth, if you will. Notice how things change, how people change when it comes to doing what God said. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 10. Let's back up a verse. Isaiah says, This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So it's not that the word changed, but that people changed. And you know, when you give people enough time, they're going to move away from the truth. You give people enough time, things are going to change. And so it is just simply a, a fact that some things may seem like they're never going to change. But yet when you look back, you'll say, you know what, we, we have really changed. I think when people look back at their, at their lives, you say, you know what, things are pretty much, this is the way I've always remembered them. But when you start looking back at history, because most people's history kind of starts when they're born. You know, they don't really think about what was really in the past. I remember uh, we were talking about on 9-11 uh, one time. We were talking about, you know, where were you on 9-11? And my youngest daughter says, well, I wasn't even born. And it just dawned on me, you know what, she wasn't born. Uh, she hadn't been born yet. And so it's like to her, that's, you know, that's ancient history. Uh, you know, I don't want to think about that. But yet to those of us who were alive on uh, 9 11 2001 you know that's a day that that's ingrained in our mind we know where we were so people look back at time and they say you know what Th things have always been the same but things may seem like they're the same but just give it time now friends that's what we're talking about tonight we're talking about giving it time to see how things change and then when you look back you say you know what man we have really changed things have really uh, taking a turn for the worse or turn for the better, however it may be. And so just give it time. If we wait long enough or you wait long enough, you're going to see some things changing that you thought would never change. I remember talking to uh, uh, one of our brethren. He's a World War uh, II veteran. And, uh, you know, he's almost 100 years old. And you start talking about things that have happened in his lifetime. And, man, he's seen some changes. You know, he, he's seen the way things change. He's seen the value of a dollar. I mean, you go down to the restaurant, and he's talking about how it, you know, it costs so much for you know, uh, 2 or $3 for a meal. And I'm thinking, man, that's dirt cheap. Why? Because to him, things have changed. Now, I want you to consider this, friends. This is what we're talking about in religion. People don't care about the Bible, and that's why things change. I was out door knocking the other day, 
and uh, met a man. He's in the, uh, he attended the Church of the Brethren. And come to find out as we were talking, he said he's actually a member of the Methodist Church. And I said, well, how is it that you as a Methodist are in the Church of the Brethren? He said, well, my wife played the piano. And he began to tell uh, me and my daughter about how when he was helping the folks in the Brethren Church uh, do something, get ready for some uh, big event they were going to have. He was you know, working, setting up things, chairs, whatever. And I think he said the preacher pulled him aside and said, you know, you've been here working with us hand in hand. Don't you think it's time that you just join the church? You know, move your membership over here. As if there's only, you know, all you have to do is just say I'm a member here. And this man said, well, he said, the thing is, he said, if I do that, he said, I'll have to be baptized again. And he said, I was baptized by sprinkling in the Methodist church, which we know that that's not baptism at all. That's not immer Bible, the Bible teaches immersion. But he said, I had been sprinkled, and he said, I knew they'd want to baptize me three times in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, I just wasn't going to do that. He said, so I'm just, I was just fine not being a member of the Church of the Brethren, but just attending. Now, to me, that was strange. We talked a little bit about that, about how, how it was all the doctrines are different, and you're, you're okay with it. And then later on in the conversation, he said, but here's the thing. He said, this is how things change. Things change to the point, he said, I could go back down now. He said, I've, I've been there all these years. And he said, I've been there all these years. He said, I could go back in now, and probably no one would say anything to me about needing to be baptized again. And he said, it's because people come in and they change and the laws relax, the rules relax. And he said, no one cares about the rules. And I said, I understand your point exactly, sir. That's exactly what we're talking about getting back to the Bible. Why is it the Methodist church or the Baptist church, the Lutheran church or whatever the church, church of brethren even exists? It's because they moved away. Over time, they moved away from the Bible. And that's where all of these uh, churches of men started. Now you may think, well, I've been in the Baptist church and I've been, in, I've been in all my life and things have always been the same. But you know, friends, that is not something unusual for people to say that. It's not unusual for people to say that, well, uh, nothing, nothing has changed when it comes to the way things are. I want you to notice this. Uh, in 2 Peter... Chapter 3, notice this, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly, they are, uh, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the Lord the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was perished. Now, why is it that people say, well, things are always the same? They're not paying attention to time. And they're moving away from the truth. And that's the way people are in religion. They're moving away. You think nothing's changed. But in reality, they have changed. Do you realize that the Baptist church has changed on some of their doctrines? Now, if you say, well, this is what we've always believed. Well, is it? Is it? Notice this. This is from a, a, a Baptist manual. And this was actually uh, written, I believe, by John Smythe, which was, is the, the so-called founder of the Baptist Church in like 1607. But notice this is what, from uh, one of the confessions of faith. It says the in, that infants are conceived and born in innocency, inno, innocency without sin and that so dying are undoubtedly saved and that this to be understood of all infants under heaven. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Sin is not imputed while there is no law. But the law was not given to infants, but to them that could understand. Now, friends, if you didn't know anybody, that would sound exactly like, that's something that, that we would say. That's exactly what the Bible would teach clearly about individuals who are born, infants. Not born in sin, born innocent, born pure, born free from sin, the, the law, there's no law that they could break, therefore sin cannot be imputed to them. Then you say, well, that's, 
That's what we always believe. Oh, no, no. When you see what the Baptists say now, it's totally different. Now, why is it that they have changed? This is from the Baptist Faith and Message. And it says, Man was created by the special act of God in his own image and is the crowning work of his creation. In the beginning, man was innocent of sin and was endowed by his creator with freedom of choice. But this free choice, uh, but his free choice, by his free choice, man sinned against God and brought sin into the human race through the temptation of Satan. Man transgressed the commandment of God and fell from his original innocence, whereby his posterity inherit a nature and an environment inclined toward sin. Why did it change? God didn't give enough time. See, so you give enough time, you get enough influence by other doctrines of tr and, and uh, creeds of men, and it changes. Now, you don't, you don't think that your religion has changed over the years? You know why? Because it started moving away from God. The very fact that you're in a man-made church is proof that man has moved away from the Bible. Just give it enough time. Give it enough time and it'll move. And it will always get worse. Very seldom do you ever see something get better. Very seldom do you ever see men say, you know what, let's go back. Now there were some times in, in history where people said, let's get back to the Bible. Let's go back to doing what the Bible says. But give enough time. Just give it enough time and it'll change. Here's proof. Here's proof how the Baptist doctrine has, has evolved. You see, but you have to ask the question, well, what about these verses? What about God's word that doesn't change? In Ezekiel 18, verses 18 and 19, or excuse me, Ezekiel 18, and verse 19, Ezekiel says, Say ye not, why uh, doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done uh, them, he shall surely live. Verse 20. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous, excuse me, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. See, that didn't change. So why is it that man's doctrine changed. Just give it enough time. Give it enough time, enough influence. People uh, come in and have their own ideas or their wishes, their desires, and they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, drawn with their own lust, as we've already read. So give enough time, it'll change. Give enough time and, and it'll move. Give enough time and we'll change the doctrine. Now, friends, why is it? Nothing has changed but time. Nothing has gone by except time, and so men change that thing. But you know what? The Bible is clear. In Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18 stays the same. The same time came the disciples of Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst, saying, uh, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter to the kingdom of heaven. This has not changed. The nature of children has not changed. What has changed is man's desire to change God's Word, or at least to try to change God's Word, to teach God's Word differently, you might say. And so what has happened is time. You give enough time, it goes by, and people start changing the Bible. I've always said men don't change God's Word because they can't understand it. They change it because they can. And they'd rather make their own doctrines fit the Bible rather than make their lives uh, fit the Bible. They would rather, I'm sorry, they'd rather make their, the Bible fit their own doctrines than make themselves fit the Bible. And give enough time and that's what they'll do. Here's another example. This is from the same confession of faith, Baptist confession of faith that we read earlier. Here's what it says. It says, that such as have not attained the new creature have need of the scriptures creatures and ordinances of the church to instruct them, to comfort them, to stir them up, the better to perform the condition of repentance to the remission of sins. Now, did you hear that? Those that have not attained a new creature, those who are not 
saved, those who are not new creatures in Christ, they have need of the Scripture and creatures and ordinances of the church to instruct them, to comfort them, to stir them up, uh, the better to perform the condition of repentance and remission of sins. What are they saying? They say, well, we need the Bible. They need God's Word. That's exactly right, friends. Individuals who are not saved, individuals who are outside the body of Christ, they definitely need the Scripture. James says in James 1, James 1 and verse 21, he says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Paul said in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. God's word is what is needed to convict the heart, convict the mind, to, to uh, uh, turn it, to bring about repentance. On the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, in verse 36, when they heard uh, Peter and the eleven preaching, the Bible says, uh, when they heard that they had crucified the Christ, now they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What, pro what provoked that? What brought about the change or the, want, the desire for change? It was the Word of God. And so here is this Baptist confession of faith. This Baptist creed book that says, hey, the unsaved, they need the Bible. Those, those individuals who are not new creatures, they need God's Word. They need the Scriptures. But now watch. Come down to a little time. Come down and you see how a, a man-made religion, the Baptist church, which was started as a result of moving away from the Bible, has changed even more. Look at this. Now, here's what the Baptist faith and message says. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He inspired holy men of old to write the Scriptures. Through illumination, He enables men to understand the truth. Now, now they're saying, well, the unsaved person doesn't really need the Bible. They actually need the Holy Spirit so they can understand the Bible. Now what's changed? Nothing but time. Just give enough time and now they've changed. I'll tell you what, you give enough time and the Baptist church is going to become the Pentecostal church. That's what it's going to become. Why? Because they're moving away from even the principles that they held to at one point. They're just changing, just giving enough time. Now you might say, well, we've always believed this. No, the Baptist church hasn't always believed that. It just shows how they've moved. Now they're saying they need the Holy Spirit to illuminate them. And I don't think that I've talked to uh, very many Baptists today that, uh, that would contradict this. Most of them would agree, yeah. you got to have the Holy Spirit to illuminate you, to, to help you understand the Bible because this is just a dead letter and you can't understand anything about it until the Spirit of God moves on you. Now, if you never understand it, I guess that's God's fault. But nonetheless, that's what they believe. But it's not what they used to. It's not what they used to teach, not what they used to believe, not according to this confession of faith by John Smythe. So here we have, here we have a change. A little time, moving on down the line. But God's word is still the same. God's word is still the same. Now, notice this. Here's another change. This is what they used to say. Now, the very next paragraph says, the new creature which is begotten of God needeth not the outward scriptures, creatures or ordinance of the church to support or help them. Seeing that he hath three witnesses in himself, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, which are better than all scriptures and creatures whatsoever. So now they're saying the, 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 the uh, non-new creature in Christ, the unsaved, they need the scriptures. But now once you're saved, you don't need the scriptures anymore. Now think about that. Now they're saying, oh, you have to have the Holy Spirit to understand the scriptures. That's not what you used to say. You used to say, once you're a new creature in Christ, you don't need anything. You've got the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in you, and, and man, you've got, that's something better than the Bible. You can just chunk your Bible, I guess. Now, what about things like this? What about things like edifying, building up? Is, that, is the word not good for that anymore? Is that not beneficial? God's word hasn't changed in Acts 20 and verse 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. Paul said, Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up 
and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I guess that Paul hadn't read the confession of faith where it says you don't need the word anymore. I guess Paul hadn't read the, the Baptist uh, writings that says, well, once you're, once you're saved, you don't need the word anymore. Otherwise, he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell them, hey, I commend you to the word of, 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 of his grace, which is able to build you up. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't need that anymore. Well, you know what? I'm going to take God's word. Now, what's changed is the Baptist teachings. What's changed is the, is the Baptist uh, doctrines on this. I mean, God's word hadn't changed. It's abiding forever. In Ephesians 4, let's look again. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Seemed to me like there was a need for some edifying, some building up. Until the whole church be come together. Now, the Baptist Confession of Faith says that's not necessary. Don't need that anymore. Once, you, once you're saved, you don't need that anymore. Well, Paul didn't know that. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26, let all things be done to edify. He seemed to be concerned about people uh, needing to be built up to be reassured, to be confirmed. In Acts 14, in verse 22, notice this. Confirming the souls of the disciple and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Why did he even give them any kind of instruction? If they don't need the Bible, why don't, why don't they just throw the Bible away? See, time has changed, that's all. God's Word hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is the way man looks at the Bible and how man treats it. How man either accepts it or rejects it. That's the only thing. And so the, the Baptist uh, Confession of Faith in the 1600s says, hey, you know, now once you're a new creature, you don't need the Scripture. You don't, you don't need the Scripture once you're a new creature in Christ. But now, now listen to what they say. Now listen to what they say. All true believers endure to the end. Those whom God has accepted in Christ and sanctified by His Spirit will never fall away from the state of grace, but shall persevere to the end. Believers may fall into sin through neglect and temptation, whereby they grieve the Spirit, impair their graces and comforts, and need and bring reproach on the cause of Christ and temporal judgment on themselves, yet... They shall be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Now, <clears throat> they're saying, well, as a matter of fact, I guess maybe this hadn't changed, has it? They said, they used to say, well, once you're a new creature, you don't need the scriptures anymore. <laughs> I guess they're still saying the same thing. Can't fall away. Can't so sin as to be lost. Oh, you may sin, you may backslide some neglect and temptation, and you may grieve the Spirit, and you may bring reproach on the cause of Christ, but hey, you're still going to be saved. Yeah. Well, we might as well just chunk the book. We might as well just get rid of the Bible. What do you need the Bible for? See? What do you need the Scriptures for? I guess used to the Baptist would say, well, you need the Scriptures to know uh, uh, the truth, to be saved, to become a new creature in Christ, and then after that, hey, chunk it. You don't need it anymore. Nowadays, nowadays, I guess back to say, well, you need the Holy Spirit to convict you to help you understand the Scripture, but then once that happens, you can just chunk it because hey, you can't fall anyway. What's the point of being built up? What's the point of, of uh, uh, being uh, 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 edified and strengthened? What's the point of learning and growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. What's the point of that? I mean, if you can't fall, what's the point of even reading it? What's the point of even going to, uh, uh, to church? What's the point of even assembling and worshiping God? What's the point? See that? So on the second thing, some things don't change, I guess. But here's the thing, friends, as we've already said. All these churches, these traditions of men, Baptist Church, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, wherever. They all started because people started moving away from the truth 
as time went on. You see? So just give it time, and I'm sure this will change too. Give it time, and I'm sure this will, will, will evolve or, or into something different. You don't see another then and now? Consider this. This is from the Hiscox Manual, another Baptist uh, manual. Here's what it says. It is most likely in the apostolic age when there was but one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and no differing denomination existed. See? This is back before time. Uh, the baptism of a convert by the very act constituted him a member of the church and at once endowed him with all rights and privileges of full membership. In that sense, baptism was the door into the church. Now it is different. It is most likely in the apostolic age. Now that's back then. Now it's different. Now what's changed? What's changed? The Bible still says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So what's changed? Just time. See, time has gone on to the point that now you have these folks teaching something different. They've changed what they believe. They've changed what they say the Bible says. But God's word hasn't changed. God's word hasn't changed. It still says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It still says that baptism puts you into the church. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now notice this. Verse 40. With many other words that he testified in his order, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. How did they save themselves? Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Unto what were they added? Verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Baptism added them to the church. The Lord added them to the church through baptism. That's still the same. That's still the same. Baptism is still the door into the body of Christ. Uh, Galatians 3.26 For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If you're baptized into Christ, you're baptized into His body. One body. It's still the door to the church. It's still the door to, to uh, 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 the Lord's body. Then, just like it was then, but now in the Baptist church, now we've got some time. In the process of time, the Baptist church has moved away from what the Bible says. Shouldn't be a big surprise at all. It really shouldn't be. It, shouldn't really, it really shouldn't be. You know why? Because people are drawn away after their own lust and entice. You know, and that's what we're talking with. The, that's what we're telling you, friends. Denominations all started because they moved away from the truth. They all started because they moved away from God's Word. They all started as people moving away from what was taught and going beyond what is written. So we really shouldn't be surprised that they still change over time. Now you might be saying, well, we've always taught what, what uh, uh, we believe. We've all, uh, what I believe is what we've always been taught. Are you sure? Are you really sure about that? Friends, have you stopped and paid attention to all the changes that are going on in the denominational world? Have you stopped and paid attention to all the changes and modifications that have gone on in the, in the uh, uh, religious world? Whether it be in their catechisms or creed books, their confession of faith, they all change. They have, they have uh, revision after revision after revision. Change after change after change. Why? Because they're even moving away from their own teachings. They're moving away from their own doctrines. Just give it enough time. Just give it enough time and you'll see that, hey, they'll even start moving away from the things they used to say. Look, the, the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, they used to teach that, that black people were cursed. You, you, if you were a black person, you didn't get into the Mormon church. Now, oh, well, you know, 
I think it was in 70, 71, 72, somewhere in there, early 70s. They, they changed that. They changed that. Just look at the Catholic Church. Here's the so-called infallible Pope sitting on his little throne or driving in his little Pope mobile. And he can speak ex cathedra, and it'll be the supposedly uh, uh, gospel of Christ. He's infallible when he speaks from the chair. <clears throat> but how many things has the Catholic Church changed over the year? So it seems, after all, that the Pope wasn't so infallible. Otherwise, he'd have got it right the first time. You know why they're changing it? They're changing it because they, moved, they started moving away from the Lord's Church from the very beginning. So it should be no surprise that they change because it's in their blood. It's in their nature. That is why, where they came into existence. Just give it enough time and they've changed. Give it enough time and they'll turn into a whole other religious group. You don't think that? Think of all the times that they have changed their names. Dropped their names. Revised their names rebranded themselves. Baptist churches, for example, are dropping the name Baptist. I mean, I'm talking about like a hot potato. They, they're dropping it so fast. You know why? Because it's not cool anymore. It's not, it's not uh, 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 the thing to do, you might say. Here's a, <clears throat> a headline just from uh, uh, about a month ago, I think. It said, a it says, a 120-year-old Illinois church ditches Baptist name over negative stereotypes. Negative stereotypes. Here's the, here's the article. It says, uh, I, I just want to read some of this to you. The first Baptist church, uh, see, for more than a century of being identified as Baptist, one Illinois church is ditching a denominational designation. The First Baptist Church of Geneva in Kane County will now be known as Chapel Street Church. With a new name, the congregation is hoping to brush aside the negative stereotypes associated with the Baptist title. First, the word first, is a historic reference to the first white church established in the city. Baptist is a misunderstood term that in our culture, brings with it negative stereotypes, the church explained on its website. The leadership said the church's name, quote, should reflect who they are, align with their vision, and should not present any unnecessary barriers to people hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Chapel Street is following in the footsteps of its parent denomination, the Baptist General Conference, which in 2008 changed its name to Converge worldwide, and in 2015 switch, switched to simply converge. I mean, they are just changing and changing and changing. For us, changing our name is advantageous for multiple reasons, and the launch of a third site is an opportune time to make this change, the church stated. While we're proud of our Baptist heritage and firmly committed to our theological distinctives, the name presents a barrier to many. Well, friends, I don't know about you. If you're so proud of your heritage and you're so proud of the name, why don't you keep wearing it? Pastor Jeff Frazier assured the Kane County Chronicle that Chapel Street is, quote, remaining a Baptist church despite dropping the identifier from his name. We know and love what it is to be Baptists. And it's a wonderful thing, but the culture at large for many, not all, is a bit of a it's a bit of a deterrent. There are all kinds of associations. The perceptions in the culture are negative. Baptists are known by what they are against in our culture. Well, don't worry about that, folks. Just give enough time, and they won't be against anything. Say that, and you can go back and use the name Baptist because it'll be known as we're not against anything. We wanted to, a name that removed unnecessary barriers and sounded inviting and lined up in some way with our mission as a church. We dropped first and Baptist from the name and also did away with Geneva because according to the church, the location is no longer accurate. We attract people from all over Kane County. All right, so 
We're moving away from the things that are deterrent. We're moving away from the things that are, are negative. Although we're still proud. You know what, friends? There's a church in Eden called Genesis Church. And I asked a lady one time, I said, I said, what is Genesis Church? She goes, well, it's really just a Baptist church. We should change the name, right? A church in Danville. Well, I door knocking church down. Well, I go to the Dan River Church. What is that? What is that? And there was another church, I can't remember uh, the name of it. It was something like that, Impact Church or something like that. I, I can't remember. But one lady described it. She said it's, uh, uh, she described it, I'm pretty sure she described it as, it's pretty much Baptist with Pentecostal leaning. What is that? See what I'm saying? Just give it enough time, though. Just give it enough time, and it'll become something totally different. You talk about the missing link in evolution. Hey, you just look at, at the, at the uh, traditions of men, the man-made churches, man, they're evolving fa faster than you can uh, shake a stick at it. I mean, I'm talking about they're moving. It, it's not slow evolution. It's a revolution. They're changing and changing and changing. Why? Just give it enough time. Give it enough time, they're getting away from the things that even they once believed. And that's what we're saying, friends, when you say, well, uh, we've always believed this. Oh, no. Things are changing because you're moving away from the Word of God. You're moving away from the things that, that, uh, uh, that are in the Bible, and that's where you started, and you just keep on rolling. It's like once you get going downhill, you'll just keep on changing. Because once you give up the principle of God's Word, once you give up the standard of God's Word, hey, open the door. Anything goes. It's like the gentleman in Danville that said, uh, he's, in, he's in the Methodist church. And he said, this, I, I'm pretty sure it may have been this past Sunday. Uh, I think he said in July, they were going to have a vote to see if they wanted the, the contemporary music to come in or if they were going to stay traditional. You know? I said, who do you think is going to win? He said, all the young folks are going to win. What does that mean? That means we're going to change. That means we're going to evolve. We're going to become something different. We're going to get away from, we're going to get away from the Methodist church. We're going to become something totally different. Well, friends, that's, that's fine. That doesn't surprise me because the very fact that you are in the Methodist church tells me that, hey, you started with a change. So change shouldn't be uh, anything new. Now, friends, the Lord's church is not immune to this. The church of Christ is not immune to it. I mean, think about it this way. Time will always get people to change and move away from truth, and that in turn will change the Lord's church. Not in the sense of it'll never exist. The Lord's church will always exist in seed form. Anybody that goes back to this book, <clears throat> the seed of the kingdom is the word of God. <clears throat> Luke 8, verse 11. So, anytime someone gets back and says, let's just go right back to the Bible, the Lord's church will, will exist again. But when people start moving away from the truth, it'll become something else. Where do you think the denominations came from? They all started as moving away from, from the truth. Look at this. In Acts chapter 20. Sorry about that. Acts chapter 20. In verse 28, listen to what Paul said. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. You don't think that the church of Christ will ever change? You don't think that it's possible for it to change? It can change in this sense. It can change in the sense that men will arise and speak perverse things and draw people away from them. Don't think for one minute that the Lord's church is immune. It happens all the time. Just look back and you'll see, hey, it's changed. It's changed. You can look back at individuals I'm talking about in this generation and you can see how they changed. I and mean, we've got guys like 
like uh, 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 Mike Deaver. Man, Mike Deaver used to be a stalwart, pit of the truth. Now, as far as I'm concerned, he might as well be a Pentecostal. He's already being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You don't think it can change? You don't think the Lord's church can change? And what happens? When somebody like that goes off, they take people with them. People start siding with them. And then the next thing you know, what do you have? You have people saying, hey, this is the man. And it's 1 Corinthians 4, 6 all over again. They're thinking of men above that which is written. You don't think the Lord's church can change? Just think about this. How long ago was it? How long ago was it? A couple of decades ago that you have guys like Max Lucado and Randy Mayhew that were known as the change agents. Guys like this, where they were coming in and they were, they were taking the Lord's people, taking the Lord's church, splitting it up, uh, ripping it asunder, and turning it into a denomination. And we knew that. We could see it. People were fighting against it. Ruba Shelley, same way. Used to be a up, great up-and-comer. What happened now? Doesn't even want to be associated with the church of Christ. Fine. That's great. My point is, you ought to be able to see the change is coming. Now, here's the thing, friends. The very thing that people were saying, hey, we're fighting against these changes, some of the same people that were saying, watch out for the changes, are the ones that are actually doing the changing. See that? I remember, friends, when I was in the Memphis School of Preaching, and uh, we went to the Freed Hardeman Lectures. And Curtis Cage, the director of the school at the time, was asked, why, why aren't we in class? Why didn't we have to go to the lectures? And he said, which one of these liberals do you want to go here? You see that? People start recognizing, hey, these, these folks are not, not sound where they are. Why are they still going? Why are we here? Why are we catering to a school then that's, that's so liberal? If it's so liberal, why are we here? It's got to be politics. See that? And when you got guys like B.J. Clark, which we talked about before, and Caleb was talking about it before we came in. Uh, guys like B.J. Clark that are associated with all these uh, false teachers, change agents, going places that used to, we never went. ACU and OCU and, and Pepperdine. Never, never, ever would we associate with those individuals. They were known false teachers. Where are they now? You don't think the Lord's church is changing? Friends, it's changing right before our eyes. It's changing right before our eyes. Just look back. Look back and say, this is where we were, and now look where we are. Friends, we've changed. We've changed. Here's what John says. John said, look to yourselves that you lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Friends, have you ever stopped and looked at where the church has been? I'm talking to brethren now. Have you stopped and said, look, look let's look where things are where things were, and look where we are now. Friends, this is, this is, this is the time, how time is affecting the Lord's church. No one wants to say, this guy is a false teacher. No one wants to say, well, things are changing. But friends, they are. They are. When 20 years ago, when 20 years ago, we would not associate with people who are now on lectureships and associating with people that were known as sound. Yeah, we've changed. When guys from Fried Hardeman, which used to be a sound school in the brotherhood, and for a long time, people were saying, yeah, it's the, it's the only one left. ACU's gone, OCU's gone, Harding's gone, Lipscomb's gone. I mean, Lipscomb's over here graduating women preachers. It's gone. Freed Hardeman's the only one left. Well, where are Freed Hardeman now? Freed Hardeman, Earl Edwards, Ralph Gilmore, they are running with the same crowd that we were saying 20 years ago and saying, hey, don't be associated with them. Why is that? Why is that possible? You know why it's possible? Because no one stops and says, hey, we're drifting. We're drifting. I started to bring a stack of books. Now, man, let me, let me use that. Uh, next, bring them next week. We've, I got a stack of books in my office, friends, that were written lectureships on changing how the church is changing, warnings about the church changing. 
And I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at those and I'm going to see how many people were writing articles about change and yet are now changing. You see, here's the thing, friends. Time, time is the only difference. The only difference between now and 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago is just a calendar. God's truth is still the same. God's truth is still the same. I mean, when, when God says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather prove them, that hasn't changed. The only thing that changes is how people view it. How do, they, how do they regard it? What do they do with it? Now, it's one thing to say, hey, this is what it says. Another thing to say, hey, this is, this is what we need to do. Now, change can happen. Change can happen. What you need to look at, friend, is look back and say, you know what? This is, this is where I am, and this is where God's Word is. You need to look at the Bible and say, hey, the Bible will tell you exactly where you are. You need to find out where you are in relationship to God. I can tell you right now, friends, if you're outside the body of Christ, you need to move in a different direction. If you're outside the body of Christ, what you need to do is believe that He's the Son of God, if you do that, you need to repent. That means you need to change. Acts 7 and 30, God commanded all men everywhere to repent. You need to repent of your sins, confess Christ before men, that is you confess your faith in Christ, and then be baptized for the remission of sins. God will add you to the church. Now, now you've changed. Now you're going in the right direction. Now you've got to keep going in the right direction. You've got to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, knowledge tempers, tempers patience. And so forth, First Peter chapter 1. You've, you've got to add these things. You've got to grow. Now you're going in the right direction. And look back and say, you know what? This is, where I'm, this is where I've been, and look where I am now. I know there's a number of people who are, who've obeyed the gospel, and they thought, you know what? There's no way this was going to change my life. And they look back five, ten years, and they go, look where I am now. Look where I was, wallowing in the mire. Look where I was, entangled in the pollution of the world. And look where I am now. So it's all a matter of what are you going to do with your time. Friends, your time's running out. You may not have time. You may not have time to pick up the phone, but if you will call me tonight, call me sometime, uh, let me assist you, I'll be glad to do that very thing. That's what we're all about. I'm trying to help you save your time. Paul said, redeem the time for the days are evil. And that's what we're trying to do, friends. I want you to redeem the time. Friends, speaking of time, I'm out of it. But if I can assist you in any way, I hope that you will give me a call or let me hear from you and I'll do what I can to help you understand what the Bible says for you to do so you may spend eternity in heaven with, uh, with us all and with God after you've rendered obedience to the gospel. Thanks for watching, friends. Always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.